Please remain standing as I read to you our scripture lesson. It's taken from uh, uh, the letter of Paul to Colossians, uh, in Colossians chapter 3, verses 15 to 17. And I'll be reading the NIV, the New International Version. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. This is the Word of God. Please remain standing, and will you please uh, face old Baptist here on this side? We will uh, dedicate this baptism to the Lord. And I ask that you please uh, raise one of your hands up and towards this boxes and let us dedicate this boxes to the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, you have commanded us to be your hands and feet, Lord God, to those who need you the most in this life. The poor, the afflicted, Father God. And thank you, Father God, for blessing us, O Lord, with so much that we can share your God, Lord God, your blessings to those in need. And as you bless, Father God, the givers of these gifts, Father God, we also, Father God, ask that you bless the receivers of these gifts, Father God. We dedicate these gifts to you. Bless them, Heavenly Father. We bring back all the glory and praises to you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. You may all be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have read a story about a family. The parents live in Chicago and they have two kids. One lives in New York and one lives in Dallas. And one day, the day before Thanksgiving, the dad from Chicago, he called his son in New York and said, Son, I hate to ruin your day, but I have to tell you that your mother and I are divorcing. Forty-five years of misery is enough. And the son screamed and said, Dad, what are you talking about? We can, what are you talking about, Dad? That's, that's not really a good news, he said. And then the father said, well, we, we can stand the sight of each other any longer. We are sick of each other, and I'm sick of talking about this, son. So you call your sister in Dallas and tell her about it. And so the son called his sister, she, he was so sad, and he said, Dad and Mom are getting divorced. They are getting divorced. And so the, the sister exploded and shouted, I'll take care of this. And then the daughter called Chicago immediately and screamed at her father, You are not getting divorced. Don't do a single thing until I get there. I'm calling my brother back and we'll both be there tomorrow. Until then, do not do anything. Do you hear me, Dad? And then the daughter hung up. And the old man, the, the, uh, the dad also hung up his phone and turned to his wife and said, Well, they are coming for Thanksgiving. <laughs> Hallelujah. And they are paying for it, for their way here for the first time. Hallelujah. Both of the parents were so happy. Hallelujah. Can we give the Lord a round of applause? Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. We are celebrating this Thursday, Thanksgiving. And Bang and I will be celebrating our seventh Thanksgiving here in the United States. And again, Bang and I will drive to Mount Pleasant to my sister Lillian's house, the Southeast District Parsonage. And we will be there to be with my siblings and their families again. And the Southeast District Parsonage will again be noisy. But this time we are so blessed 
because when we were in Emmitsburg, we were traveling almost 300 miles just to go to Mount Pleasant. And um, there were so many times that we traveled on ice and snow. But this time, it, would just be, it will just be 73 miles away. And we praise and glorify God for that. Thanksgiving is a special time to be with family and friends. And I believe you are all excited and we praise God for all the uh, college students who are here today. Praise God. We are so happy to have you. And I'm sure your parents are so happy to have you. Praise God. And in our celebration of Thanksgiving, may we all be reminded of the words of Abraham Lincoln, the, the, the uh, late President Abraham Lincoln. He, he wrote this. He mentioned this. He uttered these words in, in 1863. He said, it should be a day of thanksgiving and praise to our beneficent Father. That was Abraham Lincoln, brothers and sisters. And we need to be reminded of that, brothers and sisters. Let us not become complacent in our thanksgiving celebration. And I want to echo those words of President Abraham Lincoln. It should be a day of thanksgiving and praise to our beneficent Father. You know, we are living in the most prosperous nation in the whole wide world. But just let me warn you that there is a danger in, in having plenty. When all our needs are met, food, shelter, clothing, we tend to settle back and enjoy the extra things God has blessed us with. And the sad reality, church, is this. We forget God. When you have plenty, brothers and sisters, when all your needs are met and you have plenty, the sad reality is that you tend to forget the Lord. And church, if we forget the source of our wealth, or even worse, we pat ourselves on the back and take the honor and credit for all the blessings. You know, praise God for, for blessing us with this kind of anatomy. And so that, did, did you ever do this? Praise God, I, I, uh, I thank myself for everything. Pat, you pat yourself. Praise God for making us this way. But the problem, church, is that that unholy trinity is always clashing with the holy trinity. I have mentioned this so many times. The unholy trinity in us, the myself and I, so that we want to get the honor, we want to get the credit for everything, instead of pointing to the real source of all the blessings that we have, in this life and that's very sad brothers and sisters in Christ and when we do that we are actually committing the sin of idolatry we generalize and tell others we are thankful but always remember that the word thank is a verb and it demands an object have you ever did you did you ever hear someone say I thank myself the object is yourself well, Pastor Louie, I thank myself for all the awesome and great things that are, that are going on in my life. I thank myself. The object cannot be yourself. When you say, I thank, you always have an object which is another person, a first, second person, or a third person. Amen? I thank you. I thank him. I thank them. But since we are, we are Christians, the thanksgiving should be pointed to all, to the God Almighty, to the Savior that we have, pointed to Jesus. Amen? I thank God for everything. I thank Jesus Christ for everything. Hallelujah. Don't forget the Lord, brothers and sisters in Christ. The main object in my, man's life is Jesus, his Lord and his Savior let us not forget to say thank you to God for all he has provided us. Let us thank the Lord through Jesus Christ for everything that he has done for us. In, the, in our Thanksgiving celebration, the main star should be Jesus. Amen? 
the main star, the most important part of our Thanksgiving celebration should be Jesus. Hallelujah. And again, Abraham Lincoln said, I, would, I want to read what, what uh, uh, Abraham Lincoln said in 1863. He said, we often forget the source from which the blessings of fruitful years and healthful skies come. And he said, I therefore invite my fellow citizens in every part of the United States to observe the last Thursday of November as a day of thanksgiving and praise to our beneficent Father who dwelleth in the heavens. Hallelujah. It is a human tendency to forget to say thank you. If you are familiar with, the, with uh, an account in the gospel in Luke chapter 17, verses 11 to 17, there were 10 lepers who came to Jesus and only one returned and thanked the Lord. Brothers and sisters, all of them were healed, but only one came back to, to, to uh, praise God in a loud voice. He threw himself at the feet of Jesus, worshiped Jesus, praised the Lord Jesus Christ, and thank him. The nine were, those nine lepers who, who got healed, they never came back to Jesus and thanked the Lord. They neglected to say thank you. And in our text today, it says, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts since as members of one body, you were called to peace and be thankful. That's why I am encouraging you to always include the Lord in your celebration. Amen? Can we give the Lord a round of applause? Hallelujah. You know, this, the sad reality is that a lot of Christians can sometimes be ungrateful with, with others and worse there are those who become even ungrateful to God. When it comes to God, we take Him for granted. When it comes to God, the only time we seek Him is when we want something from Him. When it comes to God, the only time we seek the face of God is when we are in trouble, brothers and sisters. When it comes to God, the only time we seek the face of God is when we are sick or, we, or our loved one is sick. When it comes to God, the only thing that the only time we seek the, the face of God is when our children get into trouble. The only time we seek the face of God is, we, is when we end up in trouble. And church, sometimes we ask the Lord for, for financial blessings, and then He, he, he at times give them, give, gives them to us. And then what, what do we do, brothers and sisters? We squander our blessings foolishly. We cannot even give what is supposed to be given to Him. And then when trouble comes again, we remember God, brothers and sisters. Church, do not forget God. Always include Jesus Christ in your Thanksgiving celebration. You know, living within this community and comparing it with other communities around the United States, even around the world, Ben and I have already visited 18 uh, states here in the U.S., so we are still counting. We, we need the, uh, we, have, we, we visited those states by land. So we can compare how beautiful Iowa is. Iowa is so beautiful. It's so clean, brothers and sisters in Christ. And comparing this, this community with other communities around the world, church, if the Lord really is in your heart, you will realize how blessed you are. Amen? You are so blessed. We are so blessed, brothers and sisters. When we come to the time in our lives when we are able to see the truth of the gospel of Jesus and we realize that God has been so good to us, from the depths of our being, we shout our joy and thanksgiving to the Lord. And we are, when we are able to see the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ, we realize that God has been so good to us. And I want to use the words big time. God is so good to us. Big time. Big time. Church. That's why church in your celebration of, uh, of Thanksgiving, include Jesus Christ. He should be the main point, the main star of that celebration. 
before biting that delicious turkey your first bite you need to gather your family and pray and thank the Lord for his goodness and you know church it's not only about the material blessings that we receive but if you are a Christian you believe that you are a recipient of the greatest miracle and the greatest blessing in this world and what is that salvation your place in eternity your assurance of eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord and our Savior and that is the greatest blessing in this life that's why you will never get tired of thanking and blessing the name of Jesus and say, Lord, thank you for dying for me. Lord, thank you for blessing me. Thank you for transforming my life. Thank you for all the things that you are doing for me. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you, O oh Lord, because you have, you have placed and put my name in the book of life. You have written my name in heaven. Thank you, Jesus, for everything. Wait, church, if you, are, you love Jesus, you become thankful, you become praiseful, you become worshipful. Hallelujah. And your, your joy and your love and your thanksgiving is overflowing. Can I hear an amen to that? Church, include Jesus Christ. You know all the dads who are here right now? All the dads who are here right now. I always say this, you are the priest, you are the pastor in your own household. Amen? And did you know, even if you go back to the Old Testament, I always say this, those who come for advice and counseling, I always say this, when the plague to the firstborn of Egypt was coming, the Lord said, you put the blood at the doorpost, the blood of the lamb at the doorpost of your houses. And did you know that it was the dad, it was the father, it's not the mother, but it was the father who were commanded by Jehovah, who were commanded by God to do the posting of the blood on their doorpost church all the fathers and even the mothers as you celebrate Thanksgiving you lead your family to prayer before you eat before you celebrate you pray together and thank the Lord Jesus Christ for everything amen as I have said you know in uh, at Mount Pleasant this coming Thursday and Friday it's gonna be again noisy in that place as imagine almost all of us are ministers of the gospel and we have loud voices but every time before we we eat before we uh, we uh, take the first bite to that delicious turkey my sister Lillian would ask all of us to gather around the table and he would she would always ask me to play the guitar and we sing the chorus of my tribute which is printed in the United Methodist hymnal to God be the glory, to God be the glory, to God be the glory for the things He has done. With His blood, He has saved me. With His power, He has raised me. To God be the glory for the things He has done. Church, we are so blessed that it's impossible for a believer to not truly thank God. It's impossible for someone who has been purchased by the blood of Jesus not to include Jesus in our thanksgiving celebration can i hear a loud amen to that praise god let's give the lord a round of applause hallelujah